lot of 2021 cohort there are companies which are valued at a few hundred million dollars but they never had the time to hit pmf and now they are actually in deeper trouble in hindsight it's very obvious that if you have to solve for the buyer you have to be full stack but as a founder you need to have very high conviction in your idea and outcome is is your customers life getting 10x better or not and are you pushing those boundaries or not entrepreneurs are coming under attack the question has been wo entrepreneur sahi tha ya vc sahi tha So Mukul, we were asking one of the questions, and uh, all of us would have heard is uh, that "paise mein abhi tangi a gayi hai." You will, you know, capital is not available. Though I have heard a lot of investors and everyone say that, "Oh, for good companies, capital is available." But where is the truth? Where is the truth? And especially for early stage, is is capital available? Yes. If we compare it to, let's say, twenty twenty one, obviously it's much lesser. But I believe that is a big, big blessing in disguise for founders. So in times like 2021, when capital is easily available, the focus is always on how do I raise the next round. And sometimes I've seen founders lose sight of are we really moving towards product market fit or not? And the focus is more on hey, which is the metric I need to chase so that I can raise my next round. And whereas in times like these, it's a little harder to raise capital, but that keeps you razor sharp on are you really building something which is very differentiated are you moving towards product market fit or not and i want to share couple of examples with you so one of those is one of our portfolio company spinny which neeraj who's the founder he started way back in 2015 14 or 15 and he raised his series a round in 2018 so it was four years between starting the company and series a but those were the four most fruitful years of his journey because that was the time he started out with a classified model for used cars he struggled realized that model was not really solving the consumer consumer problem pivoted to a transaction marketplace model then again pivoted to a full stack model where they would take inventory refurbish the cars and then sell to the end consumer and they realized that that's when they really started solving end buyers problem and in 2018 they raised their series a 2018 the view was that used car market in india had already played out so there were three unicorns the reality is used car buyers problem was still not solved and because of that resilience because of that grind neeraj landed on that insight race series in 2018 it's been only 5 years since then today spinny is by far the largest used car retail platform in india so it's these tough periods which really force you to get to the right insight and the right value prop which i'm seeing in lot of 2021 cohort there are companies which are valued at a few hundred million dollars but they never had the time to hit pmf and now they are actually in deeper trouble so net net there is capital available it's not as easy as 2021 but that's actually good for you because it will push you harder to make sure you are delivering 10x value you are uh, delivering the right value prop to the consumers you know thank you so much and and thank you honestly for calling this out so clearly because somewhere i just think in our pursuit of capital we forget ki acche din bina capital ke bante hain and then aur acche din ban sakte hain and for spinny again to call out because i think they did it without making that kind of a noise and now i of course see tandulkar <laughs> on the uh, so that means that they're doing good so mukul uh, i want to ask you that you were one of the early investors in paytm and and uh, a lot of those uh, sort of companies you know i've been asking this to vcs for the longest time how do you get it how do you spot that acha is company mein paisa dena hai because when you say that oh, we invest in good entrepreneurs then hum sab to good hain let me sure see there for us the number one trait which we always look at is customer obsession and sindhya ji spoke about relationships over box and in our world it shows up as customer obsession do you really feel deeply about solving customers problem making their lives better and the way it shows up is in our conversations are we finding some counter intuitive insight about the market which we have not heard before uh, and in hindsight it seems very obvious so spinny example that i took in hindsight it's very obvious that if you have to solve for the buyer you have to be full stack before that either people were building classifieds or auction platforms if i talk about swiggy as another example uh we invested in 2015 at that time there was tiny owl food panda bunch of other companies 
Harsha was the first founder who said that if you have to solve food delivery in India, you have to build logistics on your own. Today, it's obvious, not just in India, globally. Yeah. But at that time, uh, everyone felt that, hey, how can you do logistics? You will never make money. One of his competitors put a public blog saying food delivery in India on logistics will never work. And today they have their own logistics. So these are very simple insights, but they are customer first. And again and again, if you mentioned Paytm specifically and, and Vijay, I think he's probably the most visionary founder in India. And what has helped him see into the future is again seeing what consumers want. So that company started out as a mobile VAS company, you uh, know as well as anyone else. It, there, there used to be companies like Paytm parent company 197, OnMobile, etc. From there to launching a mobile recharge platform, to then building it into a wallet, to then today being one of the largest, not fintech, but financial services companies in India. Uh, he's always stayed one step ahead of the curve. How can I make my customers life even better? And uh, that is the number one trait we always look for. Somewhere also, how much importance would you give to, and then again, it's a dichotomy between resilience, because the entrepreneurs you're talking about, I'll also say, these business has been resilient, Vis-a-vis -vis knowing ki, you know, you have to pivot or you need chal there. Great question and it's a very, very hard question to answer. And uh, that answer again comes from your consumers. And I'll, I'll take example of, and I'm taking the example just to make it very, very real of Misho. Uh, so Misho, before we invested, some of you may know they started out as a Shopify type platform for resellers. So small businesses or micro entrepreneurs would use Misho to create a storefront where their customers would order. Now they were seeing great user adoption. Lot of resellers were using the platform. They were retaining on the platform. They were selling products to the platform. But the more they spoke to, spoke to the users, they realized that they were not willing to pay. For these small users, just paying for software was not something they were used to. So there was consumer love, but Despite multiple iterations, there was no business model. I think those are those moments when you have to take that reality check that, okay, this is not working. What else? Is there any other deeper insight? And that's when they realized the bigger problem for those resellers was sourcing because they were small businesses and they were not able to get access to best supply or at best prices. And they then pivoted to a marketplace model which helped them source better and obviously in that supply chain there is margin pool available which they could tap into and rest is history now they are the largest true marketplace in India so that answer also comes from your consumer as a founder you need to have very high conviction in your idea once you have given it enough shots and your consumer is telling you it's not good enough that they are willing to pay for it that's as good a reality check as it can get and then you have to figure out that okay are there other deeper problems or at times even take a clean uh, break and say, let me not look for a local maxima. Let me look at if I was starting up today, basis what I know, what would I do? Chira Mukul, when you were answering this, <laughs> I was just thinking that uh, now I see the grey hairs. I have known you for last uh, 13, I don't know, 14 years. And you know, we always talk about startups and entrepreneurs and business of startups and entrepreneurs and all of us. But I want to talk and I want you to tell because you've seen it and you've grown and you are the co-managing partner at uh, Elevation Capital today, which is one of the most uh, respected firms, venture capitalist firms. And you and because and I'm not saying this because your entrepreneurs in whom you've invested speak so highly of you. You know, VCs have always come under question, right? Of course, because you sit with so much of money and uh, uh, and we are very angry so and uh, last one year also two years when the entrepreneurs are coming under attack the question has been wo entrepreneur sahi tha ya vc sahi tha how would you you know and i'm not saying there's an answer but how would you get all of us when we go out of this room to think about vcs to think about venture capitalists in india today and how do we engage with this community better? It's hard to give one answer because if you see there are firms which have different operating styles, different time horizons, 
different way of working with founders. But assuming you partner with the right firm, there the best way is to look at it as a partnership. It's you should not look at it as someone who you have to update. It's not someone to whom you are accountable. It is a true partnership. We are in this journey together, and the more transparent both the parties are with each other, the more fruitful that relationship ends up being. And as VCs, we are we'll never be as deep as the founders in their business. But the vantage point we have of meeting so many companies across sectors and connecting those dots can be very very powerful. And if we are completely transparent and candid, that power can come through. having seen bunch of these journeys so that's what i've seen work beautifully and if i reflect on my relationships with founders the most beautiful ones are where initially i might be playing an advisor mentor role but in 2 3 years it transforms into a relationship where i learn from them as much if not more as hopefully i am also contributing so and and many of them end up becoming lifelong friendships so so that's that should be the goal even for founders when then you truly enjoy that relationship that hey here is someone who cares for me cares for my company and i don't have to keep any guard when i'm interacting with them we are working towards it with single goal tell us because one of the ways like an and you know i've done this this is 14th tech sparks and we every year uh, talk to best minds in the country in this space uh somewhere in the last few years if i may say so not like just last few years agar 10 saal ko dekhe to raising capital and building money basis the fund raise that happens are two things one you require the capital but it's also a mark of validation ki mera business acha hai my startup is good if i've been able to get capital and somewhere it drives the whole story and the narrative what would you say see it's very natural uh to see funding as a mark of validation but it's not right and and i know it's easier said than done because whether it's in the media whether it is in founder circles it's always seen as a big achievement that hey i've raised so many million dollars at such and such valuation but like i was saying the final validation is are the customers rooting for that company or not if they are rooting funding will come valuation will come if they are not rooting even if you are valued at a billion dollar it will disappear in no time so capital is an important fuel but look at it as a fuel it's not an end outcome end outcome is is your customers life getting 10x better or not and are you pushing those boundaries or not if that is happening long term value creation will happen there is no question about that i have to i can't have you and not ask this question ye ai ke bare mein aapka kya khayal hai <laughs> because uh, uh, today everyone is talking about ai generative ai we have all been following sam altman and the fight and everything मतलब इट्स द बिगेस्ट स्पेक्टिकल आई वुड से इन द टेक वर्ल्ड व्हाट वुड यू से कोई भी कंपनी है तो यू नो देर वाज दिस होल थिंग द वर्ल्ड वाज एट लीस्ट मशीन लर्निंग एंड डिफरेंट डिफरेंट थिंग्स एंड डेटा साइंस एंड ऑल दैट बट नाउ इट सीम्स एवरीथिंग इज एआई व्हाट डू यू हैव टू से व्हाट विल यू टेल फाउंडर्स इट्स स्टिल वेरी अर्ली डेज बट देयर आर फ्यू क्लियर अपॉर्चुनिटी सेट्स व्हिच आर इमर्जिंग वन व्हिच आई वुड से इज द क्लियरेस्ट टुडे फॉर फाउंडर्स इन इंडिया इज हाउ डू यू यूज एआई in your own businesses to become more efficient whether it is copilot for coding whether it is for content creation etc and that we are seeing in our portfolio there is a spectrum where people are starting to adopt it and see that utility tech hiring in india has always been a big challenge and it's not going to change so can you use ai so that what needed 15 engineers can now be done with 10 engineers so so that is one which is the most obvious one second opportunity is if we look at gen ai it's still very expensive so in the recent uh, open ai event that happened they cut the cost by 1/3 but when we still talk to our portfolio companies if you are to use ai to even replace let's say a customer support agent at indian cost structure ai is still more expensive so that cost will keep coming down but it's expensive even by western standards today so there is an opportunity where now there are these generic models or universal models but can you build more india specific vertical specific models which bring down the cost by order of magnitude that can see massive adoption in india and third opportunity set is what we have already seen in the saas era which is once we start seeing gen ai native saas applications getting built can indian startups be ahead of the curve like we have been in the saas era as well building software for the world 
um, on on that wave. So those are the three clear opportunities that we are seeing. Still very early, but very optimistic. Chuda Mukul, I would love to continue talking to you, and you really have come for the first time here. So you have to keep coming, and we need to talk because I really respect. Because honestly, I'm just going to use a word which I shouldn't be using. But you don't bullshit. You really talk the real stuff, and then you are that guy. Now, last but not the least, I would like to ask you in your journey, in the last thirty years, as a VC, because you are the VC, what has been your learning? Because in some entrepreneurs, it was a very good thing. That in the last thirty years, it was not just that there was a big or a small thing. There was a lot of pain for everyone, and everyone felt the pain. And everyone has been in pain, whether it's funded or VC. What do you have to say very quickly so that we all get to know Mukul Arora? What will you say has been your last many many years of being an investor? I feel very very fortunate on when I entered the ecosystem. So those were very early days. Twenty ten, Flipkart was raising their Series B round. Make my trip was going IPO. So we were just starting to see green shoots. But if I go back ten, twelve, thirteen years, could I have imagined we'll be where we are today, even in the wildest of dreams? No way. so whether it is in just the sheer size of markets that have been created whether it is in terms of talent capital availability in terms of the kind of work that government again sindhya ji spoke about it but the kind of tech infra that has been built in this country is world class not just tech infra now what we are seeing on in physical infra now delhi bombay uh, very soon we'll be able to cover in 20 hours who would have imagined that kind of physical infra in this country so these last 12 13 years have been about like i was saying before the break it's like it's been about foundation building as a country we are still at 3000 dollar per capita income give or take so we are still a relatively low income country and as over the next decade this 3000 becomes 5000 dollars because the tech rails are ready our digital economy will actually be as a share of overall economy can be much bigger than what it was in us what it was in china so that is almost i get goosebumps when i think that last 10 years of hard work and that foundation building will now start to bear fruits over next 10 12 13 years so as i said very very fortunate and and i think everyone in this room most likely in our lifetimes we'll see india becoming that bird of gold again and i'm sure people in this room all of us will play some small part in that so can't ask for more thank you so much mukul thanks uh, uh and i have to say uh, that uh, again i'm going to say that we Uh, have to celebrate. I was telling for Mr. Sindhya, and you will agree with me that what a fantastic talk he gave, and and more importantly, the work that was done. And we need politicians like that, and I would say we need investors like you. So please continue in doing the great work, and hopefully, uh, last. ये तो पूछना बंद है. अगर entrepreneurs को reach out करना है तो कैसे करें? So easiest over email. So email ID is mukul at elevationcapital dot com. So I might not directly respond to everyone, but uh, someone from our team will definitely respond to everyone. So that's the easiest way to reach out. Thank you so much, Mukul. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for sir. having me. Thank you.